فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى in this set بإذن الله الكريم I wanted to talk about الصبر على أذى الناس to be patient upon the harm that the humans and the children of Adam afflict you with to be patient upon it and whilst I am talking about that topic the example inshallah which I will use is Hadithatul Ifq the story of Aisha the forge accusation that was put against her in which she was free from. But as a muqaddimah, as an introduction, we all need to know that us as human beings, al-isna, al-insanu fi hadihi dunya mubtala, a person is tested in this world. This world is daru ptila. It is the place of test. Allah said in the Quran, in Surah Al-Mulk, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. The second verse in سورة الملك. Allah says, Allah is the one who has created death and life. Allah created them both. Why has He created both of them? ليبلوكم so He can test you. أيكم أحسن عملا. Which of you has the best of actions? So Allah created life. And Allah created death, so Allah Tabarak wa Taala can test us, who, which, and which of us has good action. Allah also said in the Quran in Surah Al Ankabut, Ayah one to Ayah three, Allah says Alif Lam Mim, Allah Alamu bi Muradi. Allah knows what He means by Alif Lam Mim. Ahasib al Nasu, an yutraku an yaqulu Amanna wa hum la yuftanun. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah says, do the humans think, أحسب الناس, do the people think, أن يُتْرَكُوا that they will be left, أن يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا You will be left for the mere sake of saying, I believe, you will be just left for that. وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَلُونَ and you will not be tested. Your claim of Iman, it will not be put to the test. Is that what you thought? No. The fact that you said, I believe, Allah will have to put you on a test. In order to see if what you have claimed it is exactly as you claimed. Then Allah says, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Those who came before you were tested. فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah wants to bring clear. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala wants to make apparent the one who is truthful and the one who is a liar about his claim. So from those two verses we take, or those two point two places in the Quran, in Surah Al-Mulk and in Surah Al-Ankabut, what we take from it is that you will be tested in this world. Whether you are pleased with it or not, you will be tested. And one of the ways in which Allah tests a person is you are tested with the criticism, the slandering, the forged accusation of others towards you. These are one of the <coughs> forms in which you are tested. Those whose hearts are ill, those who are munafiqun, hypocrites, they will all, they will all direct their speech and their tongue towards you. And they will say about you things which you are free from and that you have never said or done. They will sit in gatherings and in places. They have no other aspiration, they have no other goal in that sitting which they have or they're sitting. 
إِلَّا أَيُّ شَيْعُ الْفَاحِشَةِ The only intent they have from that sitting is what? To spread filth on the earth. About who? فِي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا About the believers. And then the people have to realize and know that you will be tested from the people's tongues. And what is required from you is patience. Come with me, inshallah ta'ala. Ta'ala bina. Come and let's study patience on the harm of the people. The way people spread news against you and things they say about you. The hypocrites they spread. And those whose hearts are sick, they spread. Let's take an example of somebody who was done, this was done to. Our mother, Umm al Mu'minina, as Siddiqa, bint al Siddiq, the truthful one, the daughter of the truthful one. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala adha. Do you guys know who Aisha was? Umm al Mu'minina, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala adha, atarifunaha. Do you know who she is? Number one. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha when the messenger was asked in the hadith Sahih al-Bukhari lamma su'ila he was asked man ahabbu al-nasi ilayka who is the most beloved person to you the prophet said qala Aisha tu Aisha is the most beloved person to me number two the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said inna fadla Aisha ta'ala al-nisa ka fadli thiridi ala sa'il al-ta'am the virtue of Aisha over the other women is like the virtue that the thareed, the thareed is a well respected type of food amongst the Arabs. The way that that food has virtue over the rest of the food, Aisha is like that to the rest of the people. The third virtue is, the messenger said, alayhi salatu wassalam, Aisha tu zawjati fil jannah. Aisha is my wife in jannah. The messenger said that three. Four, the messenger said to Aisha, Ya, a, ya Aisha, oh Aisha, Hada Jibreel, this is Jibreel, Yuqri'uka salam, he is sending peace to you. Number five, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Ummu Salama, La tu'dhuni, do not harm me, fi Aisha in the affairs of Aisha, the Prophet said to Ummu Salama. فَإِنَّهُ وَاللَّهِ by Allah مَا نَزَلَ عَلَيَّ الْوَحْيُ Revelation hasn't come down to me وَأَنَا فِي لِحَافِ مْرَأَةٍ مِنْ كُنَّ غَيْرَهَا A woman in which I was in her place other than Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها Bukhari and Muslim narrated Those are just some of the virtues of Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها and her status That woman who the messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام said She's my wife in Jannah he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that she is the most beloved person to me. Listen what had happened regarding a lie, a forged, made up accusation was directed towards her, her honor. فَصَبَّرَتْ صَبْرًا جَمِيلًا Wallahi, she was patient, a patience that was beautiful. وَاحْتَسَبَتْ And she hoped her reward from Allah. وَاسْتَعَانَتْ بِاللَّهِ وَحَدَهُ and she seeked help and aid from Allah alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَبَرَّأَهَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ Allah freed her, Aisha radiya Allah ta'ala ala, مِنْ فَوْقِ سَبْعَ سَمَوَاتِ from high above. وَأَنزَلَ فِي بَرَأَتِهَا And Allah sat down in her freedom of those accusations, Qur'an and Yutra, verses that are going to be recited إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ until the Day of Judgment. Let Aisha tell us the story of what had happened to her. She herself will tell us, insha'Allah ta'ala. Aisha said, Qalat, the hadith is in Sahih Muslim, the wording in which I'm going to read. And it's in the book of repentance. So we go over the narration, and insha'Allah we will go to extract. We're going to extract, bi'idhnillahi kareem, the benefits that are in it. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, She said, <coughs> كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أراد أن يخرج سفرا أقرع بين نسائه فا 
فايتهن خرج سهمها خرج بها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بعد عائشة said whenever Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he intended to set out on a journey he cast lots amongst his wives and he took one with him in whose favor the lot was cast it then so happened that the cast it had taken place for Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha so any woman who came out for she would go with the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and this was at a particular battle in which the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam was going to in which Aisha got the cast in her favor so Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she said فأقرأ بيننا في غزوة غزاها فخرج فيها سهمي فخرجت مع رسول الله. so she said I set out along with Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. فخرجت مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وذلك بعد ما أنزل الحجاب. she said this relates to the period uh, when the revelation concerning the command of veil had been made already. So the verse regarding the hijab has already come down. فَأَنَا أَحْمِلُ فَأَنَا أُحْمَلُ فِي هَوْدَجِ وَأُنزِلُ فِيهِ مَسِيرَنَا حَتَّى إِذَا فَرَغَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم من غزوة من غزوه She said, I was carried in a hodaj. A hodaj is like a house for the woman in which she is put in. She's covered and it's carried. It's also placed on top of the camel. It's like a little house in which she goes inside and she closes her curtain and she's not seen. So she said, I went, I was carried in a hodaj and I was brought down where we had to stay. In short, when we set out for return journey, I mean from the expedition, she said, حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِغَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمِ غَزْوِهِ وَقَفَلَ وَدَنَوْنَا مِنَ الْمَدِينَةِ آذَنَ لَيْلَةً بِالرَّحِيلِ فَقُمْتُ حِينَ آذَنُوا بِالرَّحِيلِ فَمَشَيْتُ حَتَّى جَاوَزْتُ الْجَيْشَ فَلَمَّا قَضِيْتُ مِنْ شَأْنِ أَقْبَلْتُ إِلَى الرِّحْلِ فَلَمَسَتْ فَلَمَسْتُ صَدْرِي فَإِذَا عِقْدِي مِنْ جَزْعٍ ظِفَارِ قَدْ انْقَطَعَ فَرَجَعْتُ She said, when we set out for return, journey from the expedition, and our caravan was near to the city of uh, Medina. Allah's Messenger commanded one night to march forward. One additional night, the Prophet ordered the companions to march even forward. I was also, she said, I got up when the command for the march was given and moved on until I went out of the, uh, the encampment, the place where the Sahabas were. She said, I left out of the army and after relieving myself, because she went for her call of nature, I came to my place. And then she said, I touched my chest. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala ala. And I found that my necklace, I came, uh, my necklace, which I had been made of, which was made out of the stone of the people of Zifar. Uh, there was a stone, it was stones which they collected from them uh, that had been made. Uh, she said, I couldn't find it. So she said, I retraced my steps. She said, I retraced my steps. فَرَجَعْتُ So she said, sorry, she said, I touched my chest and I found that my necklace, which has been made out of the stones of the Zifar, had been broken. It actually broke. So she said, when I realized it, that it was broken, she said, uh, I went to back. قَدِ انْقَطَعَ فَرَجَعْتُ فَالْتَمَسَ عِقْدِي فَحَسَمَنِي ابْتِغَاؤُهُ وَأَقْبَلَ الرَّحْتُ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يَرْحَلُونَ لِي فَحَمَلُوا هَوْدَجِي فَرَحَلُوا عَلَى بَعِيرِي الَّذِي كُنْتُ She said, radiyallahu ta'ala anha, I came back to my place. She realized that the necklace was missing from, uh, was broken. So she said, I retraced my steps. And I tried to search for my necklace. And this detained my, me there. She kept her, because she was looking for it furthermore. Then what happened was, the group of people who saddled my uh, hodaj, my ride, they thought she was in it. And the reason why they thought she was in it is because I actually was very young. And she was light. So when they picked it up, they, should, they thought she was in it. So they saddled my ride and placed my hodaj, carrying me upon the camel's march, and they marched on. Then she said, they were under the impression that I was in it. They thought, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, that she was in it. 
فحسبني ابتغاء واقبل الرهط الذين كانوا يرحلون لي فحملوا هودجي فرحلوا على بعير الذي كنت اركب وهم يحسبون اني فيه شيسا وكانت النساء ذاك خفيفا لم يهبل لم يهبلن ولم يشغ ولم يشغ ولم يشغهن اللحم لحم انما ياكلن العلقة من الطعام فلم يستنكر القوم ثقل الهودج حين رحلوا ورفعوا وكنت جارية حديثة السن she said Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها the women in those days uh, were light of weight they didn't, they didn't weigh a lot and they did not wear much flesh they didn't have much as they ate less food so they did not perceive the weight of my hodaj they didn't know the weight that Aisha رضي الله because of the fact that they were very sk- and she was young as well as they placed it upon the camel and I was a young girl at that time so they drove the camel out and I found my necklace after the army had marched and left I came to my place and there was none to call and none to respond to my call she said I waited at my place Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha under the impression that when the people would riot back and they came back they would come back to the spot and they would find me so I kept sitting at my place and I was overpowered by sleep and then she said I slept فَجِئْتُ مَنْ she said وَكُنْتُ جَارِيَةً حَدِيثَةُ السِّنِّ فَبَعَثُ الْجَمَلَ وَصَارُوا وَوَجَدْتُ عِقْدِي بَعْدَ مَسْتَمَرَّ الْجَيْشُ فَجِئْتُ مَنَازِلَهُمْ وَلَيْسَ بِهَا دَاعٍ وَلَا مُجِيبٌ فَتَيَمَّمْتُ مَنْزِلِي الَّذِي كُنْتُ فِي وَظَنَنْتُ أَنَّ الْقَوْمَ سَيَقِفُونِي فَيَرْجِعُونَ إِلَيَّ فبين أنا جالسة في منزلي غلبني عيني فنمت وكان الصفوان بن المعطل السلمي ثم الذكواني قد عرس من وراء الجيش she said so I kept sitting at my place and of course she went to sleep then this noble companion صفوان بن المعطل السلمي الذكواني who had legged behind the army when he stayed after the army and that was his job there always has to be a person at the end of the army when they go who just checks just to make sure that everything in which they had they uh, didn't leave it so he be- stayed back behind the army and because of taking rest came to my he came to my place walking in the latter part of the night and he saw the body of a person who was asleep he came to me and he recognized me as he had seen uh, he seen me before it was enjoined the ayatul hijab the verses which were set down regarding the hijab he, he, she, he knew her and the scholars they took from that that the ayatul hijab in which Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she's saying that the ayatul hijab is what made her not be known because she used to wear niqab right so they took from that the ayatul hijab is what makes it obligatory on the woman to cover her face so what did she say when he came up to her and he saw her, bo- uh, the, her body and he recognized her, uh, he, he couldn't say anything except he recited, Inna lillahi uh, wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Uh, we are from Allah and to him we will return. And then I covered my face. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, فَخَمَّرْتُ وَجْهِيَ بِجِلْبَابِ She said, Wallahi, I, she covered her face with her jilbab. And then look what she said, وَوَاللَّهِ مَا يُكَلِّمُنِ كَلِمَةً ولا سمعت منه كلمة غير استرجاعه حتى أناخ راحلته فطوئ على يدها فركبتها she said والله didn't speak to me and he didn't say anything to her at all she, she said he made his camel kneel down and I mounted the camel as he pressed the camel's foot leg down and he moved the camel towards her direction and she said والله he didn't say a word to me I didn't hear anything from him except his استرجاع إن لله وإن إليه راجعون is the only thing in which I heard from him. رضي الله تعالى عنه. So then, what she, what did she, what did she say? Then she said, I was riding on his camel until she said the army where she came to the uh, where the army were. Then Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها she said, حتى أتينا الجيش until we came to the army بعد ما نزلوا when the armies had put, they resided, they harbored uh, فِي نَحْرِ الظَّهِيرَةِ فَهَلَكَ مَنْ هَلَكَ فِي شَأْنِ 
And Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, destruction came to those who were destroyed about my affairs. This is the moment that people started to talk when they saw Aisha and him coming together. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, فَهَلَكَ مَنْ هَلَكَ فِي شَأْنِ وَكَانَ الَّذِي تَوَلَّى كِبْرَهُ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ أُبَيْ Ibn Salon. And she said, the one who took over the statement, who deliberately propagated it, who spread it, was Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salon, the great hypocrite. فقد, she said, فَقَدِمْنَا الْمَدِينَةِ We came to the city of Medina. فَاشْتَكَيْتُ حِينَ قَدِمْنَا الْمَدِينَةِ شَهْرًا وَالنَّاسُ يُضَيِّفُونَ فِي قَوْلِ أَهْلِ الْإِفْكِ وَلَا أَشْعُرُ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ ذَلِكِ She said, when I came in the city of Medina for a whole month, Aisha radiallahu anha, she was complaining about her illness that had befallen her. She was sick when she came back. Um, so she said, I came, when I came to the city of Medina, I was absolutely unaware that the people were actually talking about my affairs. So I had no knowledge of it. And they were talking about it and they were saying about it. But she realized something. What she realized was, وَلَا أَشْعُرُ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ ذَلِكِ وَهُوَ, يرب... وهو... وهو ير... يَرِيبُنِي فِي وَجْعِي أَنِّي لَا أَعْرِفُ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم اللطف الذي كنت أرى منه حين أشتكي She said, the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم when I became sick and I became ill his way in which he dealt with me was far different عليه الصلاة والسلام because he said, whenever I was ill I would see from the messenger concern and I would find from him kindness, a lot of generosity in which he would show me, alayhi salatu salam. But this time, in, when he came, he, he would enter upon her, radiallahu ta'ala anha, and he would say to her, كَيْفَ تِيكُمْ He would say to Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, he would enter, and he would say to her, كَيْفَ تِيكُمْ How is she? He would talk to her directly, he would ask her affairs, those who were in the house. Aisha said, فَذَٰلِكَ يَرِيبُرِ وَلَا أَشْعُرُ بِالشَّرْ So this that issue brought a doubt to her. But I didn't know the evil that was out there. حَتَّى خَرَجْتُ Until I left one day the house. And when I came out, she came out with Umm Mustah. And when she came out with Umm Mustah, she said to her, Umm Mustah said to Aisha رضي الله عنها, um, she said, this was the, Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها, she said, She was the daughter of, she was the mother of Mustah bin Uthath, <coughs> radiallahu ta'ala anha. She said, to, she said to her, and she was the sister of Abu Bakr. She was the sister of Abu Bakr, radiallahu ta'ala, her cousin of Abu Bakr. She said to the messenger, sallallahu she said to Aisha, radiallahu anha, woe be upon Mustah, her own daughter, her own son. Woe be upon Mustah. My own son. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, Woe be upon what you, what you say. Why would you say that about Mr. Do you curse people who had participated in the battle of Badr? Mr. participated in the battle of Badr. You speak about him like that? She said, innocent woman. Have you not heard what he said about you? I said, what did he say? She conveyed to me the statement of those who had brought false allegation against me. So Aisha radiallahu anha, now she found out what happened. She said, so my illness was, it aggravated, it increased, it went more. And I went to the house of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she said, I went to my house and Allah's messenger came to me. And he greeted me and then said, how is the woman? That's what he would say alayhi wa sallam, how is her situation? I said to him, do you permit me to go to the house of my parents? Can I stay in the house of my parents? She further said, I had... I, I had at that time uh, made my mind up to confirm this news from them, her father and her mother. She to verify what they think. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he permitted it for her. He said, okay, go. So she said, I came to the house of my parents and I said to my mother, do you know what the people are talking about? She said, my daughter, you should not worry. By Allah, if there is a handsome woman who is loved by her husband and he has co-wives, also they talk many uh, things about them. So she took it towards that direction. I said, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Aisha said, by Allah, what are the people talking about? And she said, I wept, I wept, I cried during the whole night until it was morning and I did not have a wink of sleep. And I wept in the evening morning 
as the revelation was delayed in regards to this matter. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was upon confusion, he didn't know what to do. So he called Ali ibn Abi Talib and Usama ibn Zayd. He called them and he said to them to take their advice in regards to this issue which has come regarding Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Because the Prophet Sallallahu had love for her and he, he loved Ali Sallallahu Allah's Messenger, he said, when Ali ibn Abi Talib was asked, Ali said, Allah has not put any unnecessary burden upon you in regards to your wives. There are a number of women besides her and if you ask Allah that a maid servant, Barira, her maid servant, if you ask, if you may want, go to Barira and ask Barira. She will tell you the truth regarding Aisha. But if you want women, Ya Rasulullah, there are many out there. So Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he called Barira and said, Barira, did you see anything in Aisha which could have brought doubt to you regarding her? Barira said, by whom would Allah wa ta'ala sent this religion with truth? I have never seen nothing objectionable uh, in her, but only this much uh, is what I can criticize her for, which is that she's a young girl and she goes to sleep while needing the flower. When she beats the flower, she, she doesn't cover it or put it in a safe place. So what happens? The lambs come and eat it. Thereupon the Messenger وسلم, he mounted the pulpit والسلام, When he mounted the pulpit والسلام, and he sought والسلام, uh, the Sahabas to help him in this issue. So what did he do? He said to the companions, um, who is going to help me? Who would exonerate me from the imputation of that person who has troubled me in regards to my family? By Allah, I find nothing in my wife but goodness. And the person whom the people have mentioned in this connection is, according to my knowledge, a, a thoroughly uh, pious person. And he did not, and he, and he did not never get into my house, but along with me, Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad stood up and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, I defend your honor against him. If he belongs to the tribe of Aus, we would strike his neck. And if he belongs to the tribe of Khazraj, and you order, we should also comply with your order and we will strike his neck. Then Sa'ad ibn Ubadah stood up. He said, that, which, who, who is the chief of Khazraj. And before there used to be a dispute between Aus and Khazraj. He was from that tribe. He said, he replied to him and he said to him, Aisha said at that time he was a pious man and he was always a pious man, but he had some what tribal is tribal uh, inclination that took him <coughs> over at that particular moment, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he said to Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, by the everlasting existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are not stating this fact. You will not be able to kill him and you will not have the power to do so. Again, another problem occurred in the Prophet's presence again. The Sahabas are now standing up in tribes. They're standing up. Then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, Usaid ibn Hudayr stood up again, sorry. And he was the first cousin of Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad. And he said to Sa'ad ibn Ubadah, by the everlasting existence of Allah, you are, you are not stating the fact. We would kill him. You are a hypocrite. And so you argue in defense of the hypocrites. This is a mihna. The Prophet's already got a problem of his wife and the situation that's going on. And at this particular point, his companions, the fitna went big. And it became a bit of a more, it became more of a, what it was. Um, so the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kept standing upon the pulpit and Allah's Messenger tried to subside their anger until they became silent. And there was silence in the room. Aisha further reported and she said, I spent the whole day in weeping. And in the, even in the night, and I could not have a wink of sleep. Even the next night, my parents thought that this is a constant weeping of mine would break my heart. She said, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, and, and I wept. And, and they sat beside me. In the meanwhile, a woman of the Ansar came to see me. I permitted her to see me. I said, you can come, enter unto me. And she also began to weep. And we were in this very state that Allah's messenger came and he, greet, he greeted me. And then he sat down. He had never sat with me since a month when this rumor <coughs> was floating in the city of Medina. 
and there was no revelation to clarify my case. Allah's Messenger recited the Tashahud, and then he done his that the, by saying that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. The Messenger did, did that, alayhi salatu salam. And when he, uh, alayhi salatu salam, he uh, done the uh, Tashahud, he said to her, alayhi salatu salam, Amma ba'du. Aisha, this is what has reached me about you. And if you are innocent, Allah would him, he himself will he will clarify your honor and purify you inshallah ta'ala from all these false accusations and if you are and if it's accidentally there has been a lapse of uh, on your part then what you need to do is seek forgiveness from Allah ta'ala Allah will burden you for when a servant makes a confession of his faults and turns to him patiently, Allah turns to him mercifully, accepting his repentance. So the Messenger said to Aisha, come to recognize your shortcoming. When Allah's Messenger وسلم, talked, she said, my tears dried up, and not even a single drop of tears perceived by me rolling, uh, rolling from my eyes. I said to my father, you give a reply to the Messenger وسلم, on my behalf. He said, by Allah, I do not know what I should say to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr. I then said to my mother, give a reply to Allah's Messenger on my behalf. But he said, she said, sorry, by Allah, I do not know what I should say to Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I was a small girl at that time, and I had not read much of the Quran, but I said, by Allah, I perceive that you have heard about this, and it has settled down in your mind, and you have taken it to be true. So you say this to the Prophet. So if I say to you that I am quite innocent and Allah knows that I am innocent, you will, not, you will never believe me to be true. And if I confess to an alleged lapse before, before you, whereas Allah knows I am completely innocent, that I have committed this, uh, this is a sin in and within itself to lie about what I haven't done. In that case, either way, there's no way out of it. In that case, you will take me to be true and by Allah, I therefore... Find no other alternative for me, and you accept that what the father of Yusuf said. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and had due to the suffering and the pain in which she felt, she even forgot the name of Yaqub alayhi salam. So, and she said, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ So when she said that, after this she said, I turned my face to the other side and I laid down on my bed. By Allah, I was fully aware of this fact that I was an inno that I was innocent, but I did not expect that Allah would dis descend a Quranic wahi revelation in my case, as I did not think myself so much important that Allah, the exalted, the glorious, would speak in this matter, in wo in words to be recited until the day of judgment, that there will come a verses that will be read in my in my affair. Again, it shows you the humbleness that Aisha radiAllahu taala and her she had. She said, I only hope that Allah would envision and give an indication of my innocence to Allah's Messenger during his sleep. Uh, that's what I thought. That I will, he will find out like that. And by Allah, and by Allah, Allah's Messenger had not moved an inch from where he had been sitting, and not none from the members of my family had gone that Allah's the exalted and the glorious descended revelations upon the upon Allah's messenger there and then and he felt the bu the burden in which he used to feel at the time of receiving revelation alayhi salatu salam he began to uh, perspire because of the burden of the words as he descended upon him even during then <coughs> she said that if it was a winter season the way that the revelation used to come on the messenger that if it was a winter season and there fell the drops of his the, the, they would fall from his forehead Drops of sweats, and it would go severely from him. That's how it was, alayhi salatu wasalam. So she said that the ayah came down, and the Messenger of Allah, when the ayah came down, and the state of revelation clarified the matter for the Prophet, the Prophet وسلم, he smiled, and the first word in which he spoke to me, where that he said, Aisha, there is glad tidings for you. Verily, Allah has, he has, Honor, he has honored you and brought your honor out into the people's attention. 
And my mother, who had been sitting by me, said, get up and thank him, meaning the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Aisha looked and said, by Allah, I should not thank him. I should not thank him. But I should thank Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, who has descended revelation in clarifying my honor. She Aisha radiallahu anha said, Allah the Exalted revealed the following verses regarding the first of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And the verses that came down, which are from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's speech, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ جَاءُوا بِالْإِفْكِ عُصْبَةٌ مِنْكُمْ لَا تَحْسَبُوهُ شَرًّا لَكُمْ بَلْ هُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ مَكْتَسَبَ مِنَ الْإِسْمِ وَالَّذِي تَوَلَّى كِبْرَهُ مِنْهُمْ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ لَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُوهُ ظَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بِأَنفُسِهِمْ خَيْرًا وَقَالُوا هَذَا إِفْكٌ مُبِينٌ لَوْلَا جَاءُوا عَلَيْهِ بِأَرْبَعَةِ شُهَدَاءَ فَإِذْ لَمْ يَأْتُوا بِأَرْبَعَةِ شُهَدَاءَ فَأُولَئِكَ عِندَ اللَّهِ هُمُ الْكَاذِبُونَ وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ لَمَسَّكُمْ فِيمَا أَخَذْتُ فِيمَا أَفَضْتُمْ فِي عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ اتَّلَقَوْنَهُ بِأَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَتَقُولُونَ بِأَفْوَاهِكُمْ مَا لَيْسَ لَكُمْ بِهِ عِلْمٌ وَتَحْسَبُونَهُ هَيِّنًا وَوَعِدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمٌ وَلَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُوهُ قُلْتُمْ مَا يَكُونُ لَنَا أَنْ نَتَكَلَّمَ بِهَذَا سُبْحَانَكَ هَذَا بُهْتَانٌ عَظِيمٌ يَعِذُكُمُ اللَّهُ أَنْ تَعُودُوا لِمِثْلِ أَبَدًا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ وَيُبَيِّنُ لَكُمُ الْآيَاتِ وَيُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمُ الْآيَاتِ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ إن الذين يحبون أن تشيع الفاعشة في الذين آمنوا لهم عذاب أليم في الدنيا والآخرة والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون ولولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته وأن الله رؤوف رحيم. Those verses came down. Allah تبارك وتعالى He purified عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها for the from from the things that in which she was accused of. There are benefits in which we take from the story of عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها and they are as follows. Um, surah, the surah, the verses is the second page. Yeah. The benefits that we take from, or the lessons that we take from the story of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her, and her bara'a is as follows. The first one is the things that Allah afflicts you with in this world, a Muslim in this world, is good for you. It's good for you in this world and the hereafter. Because Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said in the ayah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ جَاءُوا بِالْإِفْكِ عُصْبَةٌ مِنْكُمْ لَا تَحْسَبُهُ شَرًّا لَكُمْ بَلْ هُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Don't think it's bad for you. It's good for you. Ah. And it's from the verses of Allah which Allah says, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا You might dislike something. وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ And there's good in it. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا You might... وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا And you might like... You might like, uh, sorry, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا You might like something and there's evil in it. وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَاللَّهُ knows وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ and you guys don't know. And also the hadith of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم in Sahih Muslim عَجَبَ لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٌ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٌ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتُهُ صَرَّاءَ شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتُهُ ضَرَّاءَ صَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ That there's a fascination and amazement in the affairs of the believer and this is all of his affairs and this is nothing nobody for except the believer if good happens to him he's, he has gratitude and so it's good for him if harm comes to him he's patient so it's good for him the second benefit that we take from this story is what it is upon the Muslim if he hears something of his brother or his sister that they think good of them because in Surah to Nur Ayah 12 Allah says لَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُوا ظَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بِأَنفُسِمْ خَيْرًا وَقَالُوا هَذَا إِفْكُمْ مُبِينٌ The third benefit that we take from it, inshallah ta'ala, is that if a person hears أَنَّهُ عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ إِذَا سَمِعَ مَا سَمِعَ مِنَ الشَّائِعَاتِ The things that are spread, the news is that are that are floating amongst the people that reach you, it is upon you a tathabbut, verification. And that you ask the person who's bringing you the story, where's your evidence for it? If he doesn't bring you any evidence, then this is from the things that you don't believe and it's from the issues that are lies. And there are other many benefits that we take from the story. And we ask Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Allahumma ahfadna Allahum min al-sinat, min, uh, Allahumma ahfadna min al-sinat al-munafiqeen wal kathibeen. Oh Allah, protect us from the tongue of the hypocrites and also from the tongue of the people who lie. Because the Messenger Sallallahu told us كفى بالمرء كذبا Sufficient for a person lying is what? أن يحدث بكل ما سمع To tell the people everything you hear That's enough for you to lie 
So if you hear something, don't just jump and straight away say it, but implement the ayah, يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن جاءكم فاسق بنبأ فتثبتوا. There's a different قراءة. One of the recitation is فتثبتوا. Verify um, that which comes to you regarding the news that comes to you. And inshallah ta'ala we conclude there. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.